Hello, today I'm presenting on Mary Kay Ash from the book Snapshots of Great Leadership by John P. Howell. But before I get to discussing Mary Kay Ash, I'm going to start out by discussing my strengths and weaknesses. I often ask those who I believe will be willing to be honest to share their opinion as to my strengths and weaknesses, kind of as a confirmation that how I see myself is indeed the way others perceive me. I will start with my strengths that I believe have developed through many years of life experiences and will undoubtedly continue throughout my life. My first strength is determination. Once I set my mind to do something, I most often will see it to completion, even if I complete it in a different manner to that which I first saw it being accomplished. This is both in my personal life and my career. An example of this is finishing an MBA program. Although it has taken much longer than I originally anticipated, I am glad I found the right program and the timing is better now than when I first started on this path. I think determination goes along and leads to my second strength, which is my ability to be flexible. I have found this to be a good trait in helping to overcome circumstances that come my way. I lived in Israel for two years and not knowing the language taught me both perseverance and determination while being quite flexible. When you can't read or write a language, you have to be flexible in knowing that you will most likely not accomplish tasks as easily or quickly as you would normally. Now on to my weaknesses. I know that most of us would not like to admit that we have weaknesses, but it's in our weaknesses that we have our greatest potential for growth. So my first weakness is that I tend to be impatient. I am much more patient than I was when I was younger, but I still have to fight with the idea that not everything is going to be done in the time or manner I believe it to be. And along with this, I sometimes have difficulty in delegating what I know I can do, but I still need to delegate to others. I have learned that when I do delegate, I am able to put my attentions on the more creative side of my work, and it all turns out better than if I would have tried to do it all myself. So now on to the article from Snapshots of Great Leadership. I chose Mary Kay Ash, the founder and CEO of Mary Kay Cosmetics. She was born in 1918 in Hot Wells, Texas. And she worked in sales for many years, but after being passed over for a promotion, she decided to it was time to retire. And after she retired, she decided it was probably a good time for her to start her own company. And with her life savings of 5000 and the help of her 20-year-old son, Richard Rogers, Mary Kay la- launched her dream company on September 13, 1963 a company that would help women succeed while maintaining a healthy family life. Some highlights about her life is she's recognized today as America's greatest woman entrepreneur. She's authored three books and received dozens of national and regional awards. The books were titled Mary Kay, You Can Have It All, Miracles Happen, and The Mary Kay Way. She had over 800,000 salespeople in 37 countries with a total revenue of over $2 billion at the time of her death in 2001. She has left a legacy of giving. She was a very giving person both to people, to her company, and to the environment. In 1989, became one of the first companies to enact a comprehensive recycling program. Her company banned testing on animals and the Mary Kay Charitable Foundation was formed. All while following the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. She emphasized a caring and supportive style in managing her employees and sales force. Her company has a flat organizational structure. She provided extensive and continuous training. She emphasized treating people fairly. 
and she thought that things could be motivators. So she gave pink Cadillacs to those reaching specific sales goals, and it proved to be a great motivator. And now I'm going to um, play a short clip that I believe shows her style and all that she stands for and what she really wanted to build in her company. You can succeed if you simply use the three important steps toward becoming successful. First, plan. You have to plan. You have to know where you're going or you'll never get to your destination. And then persist. Persistence is so important. Yes, you're going to have little obstacles here and there, but persist no matter what. And then third, of course, is that little four-letter word, work, W-O-R-K. You know, our company was built on the foundation of the golden rule, do it unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I hope that you will honor me by keeping that golden rule in everything that you do. And keep our philosophy of God first, family second, career third. Pretend that every single person you meet has a plan that on his or her message has made you feel important. And if you can do that, it will be your secret to success, probably in business, but in life too. Shoot for the moon. And if you don't make it, you'll still be among those beautiful stars. Go, girl. Go, girl. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I believe that this really speaks to her leadership and what she felt was important was to make others feel important and that you can do it if you just believe that you can. And that goes to show that her style of, of leadership, I believe it was authentic leadership because she showed self-confidence, enthusiasm, optimism, hope, determination, and integrity. And even though she had all these qualities that could be um, great qualities, she also had some other qualities such as um, having a short temper and sometimes getting so hyper-focused on the goal that she had conflict with individuals. But her strengths always overcame her weaknesses, and that's what makes a great leader. And um, I really enjoyed doing this, um, reading this article on this great leader. And as for a link to reality, I think many of us know consultants who are still earning a supplemental income from Sally Mary Cosmetics. One of my friends um, does sell Mary Kay Cosmetics as supplemental income. And so I was able to ask her, what made her choose this particular company and this particular product to be that supplemental income for her. And of course, the first thing is that she said it was a quality product and she really believes in it and was able to stand behind it. But she also believed in their mission of just really enriching, enriching women's lives and making them be able to fulfill their potential while still putting their family first. And I think that this resonates with many people because today Mary Kay still has more than 2.4 million independent beauty consultants around the world with its mission of enriching women's lives. One of Mary Kay's quotes says, aerodynamically, the bumblebee shouldn't be able to fly but the bumblebee doesn't know it, so it goes on flying anyway. And I think, again, that just shows her leadership style and her motivational leadership that just says, you can do it. Just if you feel that you can do it, just do the work, continue on, and you can accomplish your goals. And that's why I really enjoyed um, reading about this leader out of 
these um, snapshots of great leadership by John P. Howell. So thank you. And that's all I have.